When most people think of China, they picture intricate jade carvings, martial arts performed with precision, and colorful fireworks exploding in the night sky. Yet for all its beauty and wonder, China also boasts some of the strangest and most dangerous foods on the planet. Here are 10 dangerous Chinese foods you should never eat. Amazing. Number 10. Baby Milk I know what you're thinking. What beverage could be healthier than milk? Parents encourage their children to drink it with the promise it'll help them grow up big and strong. But in China, you have to be careful of some types of milk as they've been known to kill unsuspecting consumers. In 2008, milk and infant formula laced with melamine made it onto Chinese store shelves. Melamine is a chemical used in the production of plastic, including countertops and whiteboards. Added to food, it creates an apparent increase in the food's protein content and covers up illegal dilution. But that isn't all melamine does. The chemical also causes renal failure and kidney stones in humans and animals. Thousands of Chinese parents were horrified to discover that the milk they were feeding their children was tainted. The estimated 300,000 victims included 54,000 hospitalized babies and the death of six infants. Arrests and even executions followed the discovery that the milk companies had put profits above people and traded children's lives for cold, hard cash. Now, I'm not saying all milk in China is dangerous, but if you do decide to buy some instant formula milk over there, it's probably best to buy a premium brand or from a reputable source, as it's probably not worth the risk as you never know which factories may again have poor food standards like in the past. Number 9. Garlic Dr. Stella's garlic boosts the immune system. Folklore tells us this tasty seasoning can ward off vampires. Yet Dracula himself might be less dangerous than garlic imported from China. Let's get to the root of the matter. Every plant needs fertilizer and water. Any grower knows that a strict water regimen can increase their yield. But garlic growers in China take a very disturbing shortcut. They've been known to replace water irrigation with fertilization by raw human sewage. Henry Bell, executive officer of the Australian Garlic Grower Association, has expressed his concern about the world's largest producer of garlic, revealing his findings that Chinese growers use raw human sewage to fertilize their crops. After the garlic reaches maturity, a bleach bath leaves the garlic white and about as sanitary as a meal served out of the toilet. Yet an even more deadly chemical than bleach commonly keeps the bugs at bay, methyl bromide. The UN states that methyl bromide is 60 times more damaging than chlorine, with high concentrations causing respiratory distress and death. So in spite of how delicious garlic tastes, you're better off leaving this chemical cocktail on the shelf. And don't think an organic label will save you. Without regulation in China, organic might just be a pretty word to decorate the package. Number 8. Peaches Peaches are indigenous to China, but think twice before you open up that can. Considering their origin, you might think a Chinese peach would beat out all others in a taste test. And yeah, they might, just as long as you don't mind a hefty amount of lead in your fruit. Tests published in 2014 confirmed that some Chinese canned peaches contain twice the amount of lead allowed by law. Worse, the low cost means these are the peaches served in nursing homes and hospitals in Australia. This is also not a problem limited to peaches. Many tin cans created in China are soldered with lead. In 1995, America banned the use of lead for tin can soldering, but Chinese companies have yet to eradicate the practice. Lead poisoning is no joke, and the symptoms can be everything from headaches to a coma. Number 7. Tofu Any vegetarian knows that nothing replaces meat like tofu. But these tofu growing practices might leave you running to your nearest burger stand. Tofu is made with soybeans and can be either fresh or fermented. Tofu producers in the Hunan province of China decided to take a shortcut that will have you reaching for an anti-nausea pill. In 2017, Shanghai's food safety inspectors discovered that manufacturers were using animal and human waste and iron sulfate to speed the fermenting process. Batches of the tofu even tested positive for the presence of E. coli. I think if I went to Shanghai, I'd stay away from tofu for the time being. 
But just before you throw out any food with the healthy label and only eat fried food from this day forward, think again. Number six, gutter oil. I'm sure you'll agree that the idea of sending our bottles in plastic to enjoy another life as a park bench somewhere is a nice one. Who could possibly object to recycling? Well, you might after hearing about this next product. A recent series of arrests uncovered a dark, well-kept and ongoing secret practice in China. Gutter oil. Yes, it's as bad as it sounds. The ingredients in gutter oil range from oil gathered from restaurant drains to literal sewers. After boiling and the removal of some adulterants, the oil returns to restaurants for a second use. The dark color of reused oil might betray its sordid past, so manufacturers include a dose of bleach. Chinese officials took down a criminal gutter oil network operating across 14 provinces, seizing 100 tons of contaminated oil. The arrests were an attempt by the Chinese government to crack down on dangerous food practices. A year later, officials made another wide sweep against gutter oil. A hundred people were arrested for making a form of gutter oil that involved the boiling of rotten meats to extract the oil. Alkali additives neutralize the imbalances caused by the high amount of animal fat. In the short term, gutter oil can cause stomach pain and diarrhea. The long-term effects can include stomach cancer and developmental disabilities. So why would anyone take the risk of using this illegal oil? With the cost nearly half of what new cooking oil costs, putting profits before people is tempting. And in a country where much of the food is fried, cheaper restaurants often succumb to this deadly siren song with some experts stating that one in 10 restaurants use gutter oil. If you're in China and deciding where to eat, it's a smart choice to stay away from the cheapest option. Number five, prawns. For those who love a taste of the sea, prawns and shrimp are a popular choice. Yet the flavor exploding on your tongue may owe something to a gelatin that is decidedly not seaworthy. With bigger prawns netting a bigger profit, Prawn sellers in many cities, including Kunming and Wenzhou, have taken to injecting gelatin into their wares, according to Chinese newspapers. This mixture is created from items like collagen, animal skin and bones, or sugar and cotton linter. And shrimp sellers justify themselves with the excuse that everyone else is doing it. Though the concept of shrimps plumped up with gelatin isn't particularly appealing on its own, the real danger comes from the process. According to the Tianjin Aquatic Products Association, there is a considerable risk of contamination as the injection methods are unlikely to be hygienic, particularly if they're being carried out covertly. Up until now, the discovered gel has been edible, but researchers at Shanghai Ocean University have expressed growing concerns that cheapskates may begin to use cheaper and more deadly industrial gel. Number four. Puffer fish. While many of the foods in this video owe their danger to illegalities, this next item was legalized in 2016. Most people associate puffer fish with Japanese fugu, but it is considered a delicacy in China as well. In fact, the Chinese claim credit for originating the practice of eating puffer fish. People living along the Yangtze River have a long history with the fish. According to them, the taste is well worth the risk. Historically, if a guest called in to Yangtze when puffer fish was on the menu, he had to hand over a coin before he could eat. The reason being, if the guest died, he would have bought the fish, absolving the host of any guilt in the matter. A smart precaution since the poison in a puffer fish is 1,200 times more deadly than cyanide. That means exposure to an amount equivalent to the size of a pinhead is enough to kill you. So why was the ban lifted in 2016? Chinese fish farmers discovered a way to eliminate the poison in puffer fish by regulating their diets and selective breeding. Although that was enough to lift the ban in China, I would still urge caution in consuming a fish capable of suffocating you in your own skin. Only a few certified farmers are permitted to farm these fish, so unscrupulous restaurateurs buying from unknown sources and preparing the fish inadequately may be a deadly concoction. Personally, it's a risk I'd rather not take. Number three, blood clams. Splitting one of these shells open will leave your plate looking like an episode of CSI. While most clams have clear blood, blood clams have higher hemoglobin and myoglobin content which creates the vivid red color. 
But there's more to these clams than just a skin crawling appearance, as each one comes loaded with a 14 to 16% chance of giving you hepatitis. Although Shanghai outlawed the delicacy many years ago after an outbreak of hepatitis A, that doesn't stop people from selling and consuming these clams that are often grown in water contaminated by sewage. Vendors may face fines or the loss of their business license if caught. Blood clams in China are cooked for around 20 seconds. Any longer ruins that taste, according to blood clam fans. And clearly, the taste is something special, as people are still willing to risk their health for their love of a bloody clam. Number 2. Mushrooms Although murder might not be the intention, consumers of Chinese mushrooms might find themselves wondering if it is. In 2006, 16 restaurant goers were hospitalized in Beijing after having inedible boletous mushrooms inadvertently served up to them. The irresponsibly sourced fungi caused liver damage, nausea, diarrhea, and in one case, even a coma. But you shouldn't just be careful about eating mushrooms in China. In America, about one-third of supermarket mushrooms are imported from China. These mushrooms are commonly repackaged, often incorrectly labeled organic, and sourced from a mix of suppliers, so you never really know what you're buying. Many of the Chinese mushrooms approved for import by the United States Department of Agriculture, which are labeled organic, are often laced with toxic heavy metals due to the looser organic regulations and lower quality growing environments in China, often a result of its heavily polluted air. Analysis by mycologist Paul Stamets found that some Chinese sourced mushrooms contain 22 parts per million of lead, meaning continued consumption could be toxic. Another way these mushrooms can be dangerous is through pesticide contamination. In 2012, the FDA halted multiple shipments of canned mushrooms into the US due to contamination. Even fresh mushrooms carry some danger since farmers often add sulfur dioxide and formaldehyde to keep them looking fresher longer. Getting your mushrooms from clean environments is critically important. US grown mushrooms tend to be of a much higher quality due to stricter growing regulations. If you want to be safe, make sure to get your mushrooms from US grown certified organic mushroom suppliers with a clear chain of custody. Number 1. Tilapia Although relatively new to American consumers, tilapia has netted quite a following and is popular for its mild taste and flavor absorption. This fish holds a place in the top 10 most popular seafoods consumed in America. While some people eating tilapia might be thinking about their diets, they really should be considering the tilapia's diet before it wound up a part of their own. What are Chinese tilapia given to eat? Although the answer should be fish food, the reality is that there is a much cheaper alternative. Feces Yes, according to the University of Georgia's Center for Food Safety, roughly 50% of tilapia raised in China is partially fed with poop which it will gladly gobble up if no other food is around. And if the poopy fish wasn't enough, antibiotics are loaded into the water to keep the fish alive. Still worse, because of the antibiotic cocktail in the water, salmonella and E. coli develop into antibiotic resistant strains. While some deny that the fish are fed feces, there is no denying that Chinese fish are swimming in antibiotics, contributing to the international crisis of antibiotic resistant microbes. So while you may have to admire the ingenuity of the Chinese food industry, it pays to be wary. It is estimated that 40% of the soil in China is contaminated with arsenic and heavy metals. I say estimated because the Chinese government refuses to divulge the actual numbers. Still, Chinese state media has indicated that 60% of groundwater is severely polluted. This pollution makes its way to the world through the foods we import from China. Are the lower prices worth it? You decide. But what I'd like to know is, would you still take the risk with some of these foods? Or have you been put off for life? Let me know in the comments section down below and thanks for watching.